Hey, where do I look? Where do I look? Okay. Hello, welcome to episode 201 of the Ning Samurai and Her Guys video podcast. Yes, I said Ning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how are you? Let's talk about the elephant in the room. Okay, so this is my kitchen. <laughs> and when we have friends over, or anyone, pretty much, I usually make the disclaimer that this house is like a working farm. So that means that everything is not perfect. It is not a museum, which is what I grew up in. It is what it is. It's the best that it can be at that moment. And we're going about our business and we're doing things. So um, I have anxiety. And since I got sick, I have depression. And there have been times when I haven't recorded because of this around me and I can't figure it out. And a lot of times I face the other way so that you can't see the mess, but then I'm backlit and there's snow on the ground today. So it's a perfect, like there's so much light coming in, even though it's overcast that I thought, ah, just turn the camera around and let it be. Your house is what it is. I tidied a little, one minute, and I'm gonna let it be. So. <laughs> I'm letting it go. There's some dirty dishes in the sink. There's a pile of papers behind me. There's all kinds of stuff. And if you look down that hallway, you can't see it. The playroom is a mess. And that's that. So <laughs> I'm Steph. Did I say that? I'm Steph, your um, slightly neurotic host who is here to talk about knitting, but also just wanted to acknowledge I know that um, a lot of people have been talking about mental illness and those those topics and I don't like to talk about it obviously most people don't but I want to be supportive and address that yeah there are days when you don't see me post on Instagram for three or four days because I'm in a bad spot my pain is really high I am not doing great and there are days when I'm super up and happy just like I am right now and I'm like this all day and that's wonderful I love those days I treasure those days I try not to do too much on those days <laughs> but yeah so I'm there with you if you you're not alone if you suffer from any number of those things that's an orange <laughs> with you and we can be strong together and yeah so I typically talk about knitting first and then I go into chit chatter but um chit chatter is that a word is that a thing chitter chat ch 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 I put blush on I feel like it's maybe a bit much I don't wear blush anyways um yeah I feel like talking I'm feeling chatty and I didn't get my coffee I should go get a coffee. I'll be right back. Or you can watch me get a coffee. <laughs> also, this is on my reading list. I'm gonna start it this week. Can you see it? The Blessing of a B minus. I know, a friend recommended it to me knowing that I may, everything must be perfect. So, we'll see. And by a friend, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do sometimes reuse my Dunkin' Cups. I don't drink Dunkin' all the time, don't think I do. Okay, so should we talk? Let's talk. Let's talk, I'll knit on this because I haven't all week while we talk. So what's been happening? What's been going on with you? <laughs> I may edit this and you may see this after knitting talk um, because that's typically where I put the chatter section. Usually I talk about whips and then knitting talk. And then usually I talk about knitting and then what's going on with me. But I'm feeling like going out of order this week. So I'm gunta. <laughs> um, so last weekend I was sick. It was no fun. I totally lost one day. Sunday? Saturday? Saturday, I think. To being sick, which is... No fun, no fun at all. Um, 
Steve took the boys and he left at 8 a.m. Sunday and he didn't come back till 2 p.m. So the house was nice and quiet so I could sleep. Cause even though it's, you know, a two story house and those kids are loud. I love them, but they're loud. So I, uh, I did a nose strip, you know? You remember Biore nose strips? I've been watching a lot of makeup. Well, not really makeup, more like lifestyle blogs and so, not blogs. YouTube videos, so some makeup stuff has snuck in there, hence the putting on of blush. And I watched someone do their nighttime routine and I was like, ooh, a nose strip. I used to love doing those in high school. So I got, I was happened to be at Marshall's. I was at Marshall's with Mom and Tristan. And I got um, charcoal nose strips. You can't see it because I've put makeup on it. Let's see, that was Friday. I wanna say I did it Monday. Maybe it was, no, Tristan wasn't home, so it would have been Tuesday. Today is Thursday. So it's been two days. I have all of these red spots all over my nose, like kind of like scratches, or maybe they're like, I don't know, but when I pulled it off, you know, that satisfying, like the old Biore strips, you flip them over and it'd be like, yeah, look at all the gunk I got out. Well, I started using um, charcoal cleanser on my face, and that's really helped, the Biore charcoal cleanser. I used that, and then, the L'Oreal, I wanna say it's a clay cleaner, um, clay wash that Deb had sent me. I love that. Oh my God, it's totally part of my, my routine now. But it um, comes in a green bottle. If you could get it, you should. Um, so I've been using those. So I thought, oh, a charcoal nose strip, no big thing. No. <laughs> Oh, the reason I was talking about using those is that my nose pores, I'm a, I'm a French descent and I have large features and dark hair. And so my, just like my aunts and my mother um, and my grandfather, we all have large nose pores. It's kind of gross to talk about, but, but we do. But since I've been using those two products, the Biore Charcoal and the L'Oreal, I want to say it's clay. I really think it's clay. Anyways, it's in a green tube, purity something. Um my pores have gotten really small and like you can barely see them anymore which is awesome but when i pulled up that nose strip the only thing i think it pulled out a bunch of hair <laughs> yes yes i am 38 and i do have some hairs on my nose i'm like a witch now um so i don't know if the red spots are related to that or what or because i didn't leave it on too long and yowzas so it's been a few days and my nose was super sensitive to the touch i can touch it now but there are still places where it's like ouch so there's that <laughs> so be careful when and i didn't think to check um expiration date or any of that stuff which maybe i should have because it's it's Marshall's, so who knows? I mean, it's like seconds stuff. It's not, uh, at least that's what I think. I could be totally wrong, but that's what I think is available at TJ Maxx, Marshall's, like it's not the, or it's, it's yeah, seconds from the season before, whatever. So there's that. <laughs> so I've also, this week, I keep, I know you really like seeing my neck, but that's the best way to get my glorious long locks of hair back off my shoulders. <laughs> um, I go to acupuncture and I don't talk about it as much as I should because um, I feel like there needs to be a PSA about acupuncture. I go to a community acupuncture, acupuncture place and it's so weird when I go and I'm the only one there. I hate it. Like I've, at first I thought I wouldn't like being in a room with that many people. There are five of us, but, um, I feel much better when there are at least two other people, like something about the vibe, the atmosphere just is more soothing to me. And I love the place. I fall asleep most times. Um, so it's not like a comfort, like I'm uncomfortable being alone there. It's just, I really like having other people around and, Someone had said, it's like, would you go to an empty restaurant? No, this is similar. So um, anyways, it's amazing what acupuncture has done to done for my pain levels. It has, it's just awesome. And you know, I'm sick and I go in there and I tell her I have a cold and she does her magic and I leave energized and like, it's just a wonderful, 
meditative experience for an hour a week that I really can't say enough good things about. So if you have stress or pain or I just, oh, you could feel so much better. So sometimes drugs aren't always the answer. <laughs> sometimes they are and they're very helpful when they are. So it is spring sports season. I'm just, I'm glancing and I'm jumping. So, you know, follow me through my topics here. It's, well, it's not quite spring sports season, but it's spring sign up time. And we were looking at the sports for four year olds. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So I want them to learn baseball, but neither one of them want to play. And we talked about it and no, I'm not going to force it. I'd like to, but the third choice that we could do was lacrosse and they were both like no no and then steve brought up a lacrosse game on youtube and let them watch it and they were both like yes we want to do lacrosse <laughs> so um ro also wants to do soccer he's our soccer superstar he's he's and um he's doing flag football and so steve and i both said okay two sports is enough for the spring you don't need more than that we know I know I want him in sports to get his energy out, but he doesn't need more than two. So he's not gonna do it, but Tristan's gonna do lacrosse. So all this to say that, does anyone have experience with four-year-olds in lacrosse? <laughs> do you recommend, do you not recommend? Was it um, a good learning team sport? Did your kids carry it through? Do they play when they were little and then not interested? What's the deal with lacrosse? I don't know anything about it. I know that we have teams, like they wouldn't have a feeder program at the rec if it doesn't carry through high school. So I know he could play. And I was talking to his preschool teacher who I thought would make me feel better. She has three college age children of her own. I think one's graduated, but whatever. They're all in their early 20s. And her daughters played, but her son did not. And she was like, have you seen how violent men's lacrosse can be? And I was like, no. <laughs> so I hope it's not as bad as hockey or football. I may regret this decision. <laughs> but that's where we're so at. what have I been working on? I've got some things to show you. And if I hadn't sat down and started talking and want something mindless, I would not have any progress to show you on the Pritchard sweater. So this is by Christina Danny, and I am using some acrylic yarn. It's called Sugar Wheel, I believe. And one skein is variegated, or not variegated, it's a color transition yarn. And the other skein of it is gray. And so you saw this last week. And I didn't move my markers but I, I bet I've knit an inch in a week. So I haven't really worked on this. I've been knitting more pressing projects. Even though this is fun, I totally enjoy it. I think um, we're going to, see, I know, we're going to see the new How to Train Your Dragons movie uh, opening night. I bought tickets a month ago, reserved our seats for all six of us, the grandparents, the boys, Steve and I, center theater, the best row, 6 p.m. show, we're gonna go see the new Dragons movie. Um, Cause my guys love, Tristan in particular loves dragons. And by dragons, I mean the How to Train Your Dragons series, Race to the Edge of the World, whatever the other movies are. Anyways, he enjoys them. So I think I'll bring this. This'll be a good thing to knit in the dark. So I am using size 10 needles, I wanna say. They're big fatty fatties. So, and as always, not as always, but as mostly, um, <laughs> I use Knitter's Pride. Is that what this is? Gosh, I don't even remember. No, these are knit picks. These are knit picks. <laughs> the tips are from my original knit pick set. Yes, the cord, I don't know what where the teal cord came from, but it's a teal cord. So there's that. <laughs> what else have I been working on? Well. I've hit a milestone on the blanket. Oh, that's the back. So this is the first section that I that I knit. And you can see it's it goes from my waist 
to my toes. This is usually on my toes and I sit with it on me. So I've gotten to 102 hexes. And one night this week when I was sick, I just, I couldn't even think about knitting. I was just like, oh, I'm a lump. I, um, I did some weaving in of ends on this one. So the second portion, this is about 65 hexes in here. And the other one is in the 30s, obviously. We can do math. Um, I try to weave in my ends every week because I don't, I'm not an end weaver inner. I don't enjoy doing it. And so this one looks a lot better looking at the back. I can see there's probably 10 hexes that need ends holding in, which is much easier to do. A little bit here, a little bit there, take a few minutes. So here's this week's progress. So wait, let me show you how big it is. So it's growing. It feels like just yesterday I was at like the one center one. So this one I'm trying to be more deliberate and knit it out. So it's like six rows, six hexes across constantly. Because the other one, I was not consistent in the shape of it. It's very, um, I don't even know. Yeah, it's weird. It's like a hex, but then it goes down really. Um, so this one I'm trying to do better. And I will eventually pick up along one edge of both and knit that hex in between as my way of assembling the whole thing. I'm planning to leave the edges like this. I may do a, you know, a border around. I don't know, but I'm not gonna, um, I could do half hexes, but I kinda don't want to. I kinda wanna leave it like this, so. And it's such a great blanket. I've been using it, as I said, so much lately. Usually, um, when I sit on the couch, I don't, it's not good for my joints for me to get cold. And so I'm almost always under a blanket and the boys have learned that like, let's snuggle with mommy. And so they climb under the blanket with me. But for as lightweight as this is, this is fingering weight knit on size threes. It is exceptionally warm. So I'm really loving it. So, okay, this week. So this, I did this one, which is some um, Croy that I used to knit socks for my father-in-law and the um, socks for cousin Daryl. Uh, this is some fiber nymph dye works that I used sunshine. So this was a gradient one. It went from green to red. The base is, was her sunshine base. And what did I use it for? I used the green to knit a citron, I believe. Yeah, I did. And there might've been black, cause I feel like the citron was black and green. And I never liked the citron and I got rid of it. So that was what happened. But I do like the, the red and I like the way it's slightly variegated. It's very pretty. Um, this you've seen before, you've seen before. Here we go. This is some um, Knit Picks Stroll or Knit Picks Essential. I think those are the same yarns, just has the same two names. Um, and I use this to knit some socks. Nope, some slippers really nice slippers. I like to wear them a lot. I did stripes with this and a red and a teal and a yellow. And they're, they remind me of the 70s for some reason. And then here we have, this is a Barocco color that I bought and then I sold, I got rid of it. It sat in my stash for several years and then I bought it again because I still love the color. And then I knit my mother-in-law a pair of socks with it. And I still have a pretty substantial ball left of it. So I might knit myself a pair um, and do contrasting heels and toes and make them shorties. So let's see what else. That's the bright orange in progress. This purple nope that purple was there okay we're over to this green um I think this green's from Linda it's definitely from one of the swaps I received as is the purple which is rocking a sailboat not really seasonally appropriate oh my gosh guys 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 this is the best color ever I would never buy this color and I'm not a pastel girl and I'm thinking it's probably another crafty girl. I put out a question on Instagram, but nobody knew to tell me what it was. If you know, please leave a comment and tell me. But it looks to me like another crafty girl. It's a sparkle base 
and it's gorgeous. Oh, it's so gorgeous. I don't even know what I would knit for myself with it, but I have to have a skein of it. I have to. So, and then, yeah, this is the last one. This one, I think this was the one in progress last week. This is also from Linda or Melissa. This was Melissa for sure. That sent me that one. This one, maybe Linda. So, let's see. Let's count them. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hexes finished this week. So I am trying to knit um, 25 for my crafty bingo times two. So I'm trying to knit 50 this year. I'd really like to finish it. I have a lot of great colors that I still can use from swaps and stuff and and having them in this big bag really inspires me to use them so at some point I don't know how much bigger I'm gonna let this get before I attach it to the other one and then start another smaller one uh, it's easier on my wrists just to have not as much weight hanging off it so and for these I'm using my carbons in size three because I love them and I think this is knitter's pride there um, interchangeable loop that my mother-in-law got me for Christmas one year. Different sizes or different colors, different lengths or different colors. So there's that. <laughs> okay, what else? So I told you two things last week that I wanted to get to work on. <laughs> First, here's the more, here's that sunshine but I'm using that inner green for my black locks. So this is a pattern by Megan Williams. Oh, back up. The blanket is the hexagon by Very Busy Monkey. And I love it. So this is the Luck Lux by Megan Williams. Stocking at Zombies. And you see, that's where I was. Let me get even closer. Okay, there I got my directionality right. And you could see my four leaf clovers. I love that back detail. I wore it. I wore this one day. My foot was cold while I was knitting, <laughs> so I put it on. But then I was like, don't wear it too much. So um, for this, I'm using the the electric color is Miss Babs Yowza. And the green is this, as well as some um, Janets that I had just scrappy laying around. So I knew I wouldn't have enough of this, which I like the contrast of this color with the green much better than that red really throws it off. But this, this is more of a variegated, less saturated, you know, you have the highs and lows in the Fiber of Dye Works color, which is great. It's what I like usually, but for color work, I wanted it to be more this green. So I cast on with these two on the first sock. And at some point, I'm not gonna tell you where, I switched to the Fiber Nymph Dye Works and finished the color work. So you could see that this cuff definitely is more of the variegated. Fine, totally fine. I don't care, I don't care. But um, what I will see when I'm wearing these around the house is the lovely contrast of the foot showing. So, and so I stopped, I'm gonna say about here. Like I didn't get very far past the heel before I switched um, to the other color. So I'll use all I can of this on the second one. Yeah, the second one. Would you like to see how much I have done on the second one? I'm almost through the toe chart for the second one. And now you remember, this is the pattern that on which you can see it. On the top of the foot, the electric green is the background color, this hand, or the overtop color. When you are knitting, it's the one that you always put over the other one. And on the back, it's the dark green that is the background color. So when knitting these, it's like on one side, I have to remember that, okay, green in front, green, light in front, light in front, okay, dark in front, dark. <laughs> <laughs> Which I remember the first time through being like, gosh, this is a mental exercise to remember that. So, but Megan makes it super easy to follow her charts and, um, yeah, 
I'm knitting the large size because I wear a woman's 11 or maybe a 12. <laughs> Shoot. So, and it fits me perfect, even with this fun heel. So I'm so excited that it, it finished because the Norwegian Rose color work socks that I knit back in 07, 06, 07, um, absolutely stunning, 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 stunning socks. They were this dark purple and like this color and um, purple was the background. That was the color of the rose flowers and I couldn't get my foot in them. I still have them, I kept them, but I couldn't get my foot in them. So I'm glad to see that these work, yay! So um, for these, Megan has us on size threes again, another pair of carbons, but these are fixed. And um, I think size ones or zeros, I use zeros for the cuff, because your stitch count's pretty high, so you want them to cinch in a little bit. But I also used the zeros, she didn't tell you to, but I did use them for my cast on at the beginning just because before the color work, I wanted it to be nice and tight because I felt like this is a bit messier and I probably used the threes there and I wanted it to be a nice dense, nice dense too. So there you go. I got these. Don't you love the lines up the side? It's so pretty. So pretty. I feel like a magician. <laughs> I love that she figured it out for me so that I just have to use my highlighter. And I get these beautiful looking sides of the sock. So there's those. I will be able to wear these for St. Patty's Day. Absolutely, absolutely. I forgot to tell you something. So when I finish with a yarn for my hexagon blanket, I take the scraps and I wrap them up. And I have two of these balls going right now. And at first I was throwing them away. But then I realized, you know, it's still, you know, 20, 30 yards of yarn and I hate to throw it away even though it's a scrap. So I started making these little balls that have all the other colors underneath. And I saw on Instagram the other day, the most beautiful scrap blanket. It's gonna be my next one. It is called Northeasterly and it's by Melissa Alexander Loomis. Here's someone's project. Can you see it? Can you see? Ah, oh, they're so pretty. It hurts, they're so pretty. Oh, I love it. And looking through people's, I subscribe to the hashtag on Instagram, which I love doing. It's such an enabling thing to be able to do, to be like, yeah, I like that sweater. Show me everyone that's working on it in every color combination. It's like, <gasps> makes me love me more. So you can have all these varying, it's not like, the hexes where you have a fixed amount that you have to put in there for each hex. Come on, focus. So you could do a little tiny bit of V, a big V, and they're attached. It looks like they're attached as you go. So no seaming. So I'm excited. I believe the pattern, yeah, it's $5 US. I will be buying that as soon as this one's done. Like I'm not gonna let myself cast it on right away. Like now. I need to finish the scrappy blanket I'm on that I'm enjoying doing, but I'm, I'm excited for a new one. Speaking of things I'm excited about, I didn't cast on the leg warmers. I know I said I would. I will. I will. I just, I, uh, I gotta, I gotta finish some things, you know? So one of the things that I gotta finish is the, look at this. I'm carrying around like half a ream of paper. These are all patterns I've printed out that I'm like, oh, I want to make that. Oh, I want to make that. And I don't want to lose them. And I'm not that organized that I have a place where I keep them. I used to have a nice binder, but then I would never go to the binder. And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna just put them in a project bag and they'll be with me. And this is a fat squirrel project bag. You've seen it, you've seen it. But inside is my go with the flow. This is by Jennifer Lassonde. I'm using Yowza. Frankly, I'm not in love with this. Okay, not in love with the yarn. The pattern's great, pattern's fine. It um, shows a lot more in people that are doing solid colors. And so I was like, mm, it's okay. I'm, I like checking the boxes, so I keep going. I'm doing a knit along. Other people have joined me. Yay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but then I finished section one and I went to section two, which is the lace section. And I'm in love. I'm in love. The lace was so much fun to knit. I did all the weighing like you're supposed to and I totally maximized. I used as much of the yarn as I could for the lace section. And um, 
This is why I love Yowza. I don't love Yowza knit in stockinette or garter. I love it with a slip stitch, uh, any sort of textural detail. Probably I would like it in a seed stitch too. But when I think about my Denver cowl that I love that Yowza skein in particular, um, what else do I wear a lot? I have a couple of Yowza projects anyways. The more texture, the more I love it. It just makes those colors meld together even better. So this was so much fun to knit this section. <laughs> and now I'm running downhill because now on section three, I have decreases, right? So every row is getting shorter, every row is getting shorter. And I've got the boxes to check and it's so much fun. And this is, I didn't, so the first section you keep, you knit, oh, I'm tangled, hang on. First section you knit, ooh, did you see me blow out there? You knit 40% um, of your yarn. So I did the middle section and I thought, okay, she didn't say it, but I think it's logic, logically 40% for the next, for the end section, section three. And so I did 46%, like I, I took it pretty close as close as I dared. So this is how big my ball is now. Look, it goes good on my shirt. Guys, oh. ding, knitting needles on light. So this is knit on sides, but see, it's, so this is DK, wait, yeah, DK Worsted. She wrote the pattern for fingering, sport, like everything. And so my tail is not super long. That's the only thing. Um, you have in her pattern, I think you repeat the the stitches for section one five or six times for the lar for fingering weight, but then for the the um, heavier your yarn is, the fewer times you repeat it, or at least I had to repeat it fewer times because I hit my 40% before I used all the boxes up. So my tail is not super long, right? So it's gonna be like, like that long of a shawl, but really, I don't care. I'm gonna block it so it'll stretch. And really all I want is this <laughs> right here. This is what I want. Isn't it gorgeous? So I made myself stop <laughs> before running downhill through section three. And now that I've talked to you, I can totally do section three. <laughs> can you tell I am like, so into knitting and so inspired lately. I don't know what's going on. Like, I love my little stitch markers. I love doing that, don't get me wrong. But knitting was always my favorite. Well, I knit, I was an exclusive knitter for 15 years. And then I had this, this little boyfriend on the side called Stitch Markers and that was fun. But now I'm remembering why I love knitting so much. So it's great, it's so exciting. And I hope you're excited too. I hope you're enjoying what you're knitting. I'm looking, do I have anything else I wanted to tell you? No, this was supposed to be a really short episode, but I was chatty Kathy, so yay. <laughs> Guys, um, I know I told you how much I love knitting, and I do, but there is a shop update this week. I forgot. <laughs> okay, check it out. Thank you. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's shop update for adornits.etsy.com. First up, we have The Hobbit. So this is inspired by the copy of The Hobbit that we have re read and love the colors in that. Um, the American Southwest inspired this cactus and turquoise set. Game of Thrones, Winter is Coming, House Stark. We paired that up with the Weirwood tree from the Godswood and then the Night's Watch. You can see we've got a sword in there. I don't know if it's made from Valerian steel, but with this set of the Night's Watch, we have a white, followed by our new black-faced sheep. Oh, I love him so much. Uh, we have a door, the Explorer, just one of these in the shop with her friend Boots, the monkey. Happy Easter. This is Peter Cottontail hopping down the bunny trail. Okay, I'll stop because you don't want to hear my singing. <laughs> and there's Miss Afro who helped me do the listings. So this week we've got 30% off orders of $25 or more and 15% off orders of $15 or more. Happy shopping. Okay, one more thing I wanted to share with you guys. What I've been listening to slash watching because 
all this knitting mojo may in fact be inspired by the number, sorry, of new podcasts I'm listening to. So I, or watching, I started, no thank you, I started listening to My Favorite Murder. And I did, like I listen to news political stuff every morning, first thing. That's like, welcome to the world, Stephanie. And then I do a couple audio knitting podcasts, but they're not every day. And I've listened to Up and Vanished, Atlanta Monster, and um, now I'm listening to Zodiac. Those are great, but they're only once a week. And so somebody somewhere recommended my favorite murder. So I've been working my way through their back episodes. I am the biggest Freddy cat you ever met. Okay, scaredy cat, whatever. Like, I haven't seen a horror movie since, I told you, since high school. Like, I don't want, like, scary. Like, thriller, suspense, I can handle, but no scary. But it's more like, Steve's like, you're listening to what? My favorite murder? I'm like, yeah, well, really, it's a comedy show where they kind of talk about murder a little bit. So, it's not that scary. <laughs> and it's so funny. They make me laugh out loud. Started All the time. watching Toad Hollow, the Crafty Toads. There's a pair of sisters. They're really cute from New Jersey. They sound like. Do you guys remember Dr. Gemma? Like I went on this whole mission one day to try and find Dr. Gemma. And is she from New Jersey? These ladies are from New Jersey, and their voices sound really similar. And I thought they were Dr. Gemma at first. Like my ears were picking. They're not. They're completely separate, but they remind me of each other. So there's that. Um, juggling the Jenkins. I don't know if you are into um mom humor like what it's like to have little people and trashy stuff and she's funny <laughs> so i enjoy her she's not knitting um and her the one she did about the people in your brain hilarious uh what else that i haven't talked to you about well you know i like she must knit but i've also been watching amy florence uh, Bad Wolf Girl sits and knits. She's interesting. I've enjoyed her. Niches Get Stitches. That's another sister team that's been making me laugh. Um, Sassy Knits. I love her. She's pregnant right now. So it's fun to go on that journey with people. And let's see. Is there one more that jumps out at me that I've been really loving and wanting to catch up on? No. No, that's it. I already told you about um, Nottingham Knits. She's the other one that's like, oh, so funny. So I've I've gone crazy over on YouTube. I don't know if you're able to see what I subscribe to, but I've gotten a lot of new knitting podcasts. Like it's been a rabbit hole and I'm loving it. So there's that. Anything else? Hmm. Still Stargate all the time. Uh, season, I was wrong. I'm on season seven right now. So we just got Daniel Jackson back and I was so sad. Oh. I mean, I love Daniel and I was really upset when he was gone, but I really liked Jonas Quinn. He was super sweet and I remembered him from something somewhere. I think he was on a show on TV in the 90s and he was part of my childhood and I just felt so bad that they were like, no, Michael, whatever, wants to come back, so bye-bye. <sighs> they kind of kept him both. But anyways, still loving it. It's a great show. So there's that. Um, did I tell you about Project Blue Book? History Channel show. It's very good. I think that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I'm officially done talking for today. I hope you have a great 10 days or so until I see you again. Happy knitting. If you're not inspired, go watch some other knitting podcasts. You'll get there. Find your people. You'll love it.